God damn, I really hate Ronald Reagan. Well, uh, why is that? Because his neoliberalism policy is paying American money abroad and destroying domestic industrial base. I can't believe you can serve it, Cucks. You would support him. What happened to America first? What if I told you those policies you're complaining about weren't Reagan? What if I told you those were implemented by the Clinton administration? Mm -hmm. What's up, guys? This is Mr. Asian Pie. Neoliberalism, the post-industrial version of liberalism. Where liberalism calls for minimal central authority in the economy and strong property rights, neoliberalism calls for economic deregulation and strong property rights. Neoliberalism also calls for global free trade and freedom of choice for consumers and investors alike. The way it plays out is by having investors willing to spread out their own capital with the promise of return, something another ideology failed to do. Bing, bang, boom, all of a sudden Japan's the second largest economy in the world, global poverty rates plummet and inflation rates meet their actual projections for once. The US developed a symbiotic relationship in this system, and Reagan made an outline of how this global prosperity works. We, the USA, protect the global system and give out free and, in my opinion, way too lenient loans to anyone willing to be a good participant. In return, you have to deal with our trade quotas. Mm -hmm. Trade quotas? According to Wikipedia, Reagan got rid of all the protectionist policies. Well, according to Reagan and the Reagan Foundation. Reagan prided himself on the fact that he prevented trade wars because, according to him, they're a betrayal of allies. But consider the fact that he never relaxed quotas or even just loosened tariffs. In fact, Reagan doubled down so much that many of his contemporaries compared him to Herbert Hoover. And even more contemporarily, President Trump, you know, the anti-globalism dude and the trade war with China guy, boasted that he was just as tariff crazy as Reagan. For example, back in the late 1970s, the US automotive industry was on the cusp of total collapse. Foreign cars, especially Japanese cars, were flying off the parking lot by the millions. As a response, in 1981, Reagan tightened the control on car inputs, which put a maximum quota of only 2 million cars being allowed to be imported into the country. This saved an estimated $10 billion from leaving American wallets and going into the hands of the Japanese auto industry. And according to a New York Times opinion piece from March of 1985, it saved 44,000 jobs. In 1982, it was the same story with sugar and various other foodstuffs, to uh, less of a fanfare. In 1987, the same can be found with foreign hardware to protect the American semiconductor industry to a more positive reaction. Throughout Reagan's presidencies, quotas and tariffs, left and right, steel, lumber, textile machines, fucking motorcycles of all things. If you want to criticize Reagan for anything, it would be his hypocrisy in economic affairs, promoting global free trade and cooperation while simultaneously putting protectionist legislation on domestic markets. Though you can't lie, these hypocritical policies saved American jobs and kept American interests first. I guess you can also criticize Reagan for his gun control policies, which were fucking retarded as shit. Now, let's compare Ronald Reagan's neoliberalism, which apparently destroyed America, to Bill Clinton's neoliberalism, which no one seems to remember. Well, except for that one guy. One of Clinton's first moves as president was to sign NAFTA, which at the time was seen as a major victory for Clinton, until it was so disastrous that he had to renegotiate during his re-election. You see, NAFTA got rid of all the trade barriers between the US, Canada, and Mexico. Now you can purchase a product manufactured in Sonora for the same price in Montreal and in Milwaukee. Ross Perot rightfully argued that this deal only benefited Mexico because they were a developing country as compared to the US and Canada. They offered a more optimal climate when it came to manufacturing, thanks in large part due to cheaper labor and investment thanks to larger returns. NAFTA was very one way, and it was practically a gift from the US to Mexico. Clinton basically demolished all the Hoover-Reagan era barriers while Mexico was allowed to keep its faucet tight, with the exception of food. Now, I'm not saying NAFTA was bad because it didn't benefit the US. For the Mexican people, the signing of NAFTA saw poverty rates plummet, inequality go down, and a contributing factor to the downfall of the PRI. Great things. Though, it shouldn't underplay American losses, which was almost the exact opposite happened, especially in the Midwestern United States. Job loss leads to poverty rates and homelessness is sore, broken communities, Communities develop, everything associated with that happens, and cities fall into a state of chronic decay. Corrupt union-backed politicians gloat about wokeness while the cities they are leading are comparable to third world countries, and they bitch about corporations and companies abandoning them while also implementing the most business-hostile policies imaginable. Clinton sacrificed thousands of jobs and billions of dollars just so he can go around flashing Monica Lewinsky his 0.5% GDP boost because now we trade with Mexico. Also under Clinton, there was a bunch of banking reforms which happened which might have led to the dot-com bubble of 2002 and undoubtedly led to the 2008 recession. And his downsizing the military might have led to a homelessness situation with veterans and a security gap which might have led to 9-11. But now we're getting a bit off topic. Congratulations, Clinton. You burnt down your workspace and let someone else take the blame. Now, if only you could do the same with your sexual allegations. This has been Mr. Agent Pie. See you on the flip, and don't be stupid.